One of the things that people are taught to see is space. We think of space as a three-dimensional object, as a substance, a three-dimensional substance. Space is what does not exist. There's, there's not a thing there. It's uh, simply a, uh, a metaphor, uh, something we use to structure our experience. And over time, it has become uh, ossified in our minds. As any painter or sculptor, Tony Robbins spends much of his time arranging objects in space. The space he's grappling with is, however, different. It's not the familiar three-dimensional space of length, width, and height. Nor is it time, but so-called hyperspace, which contains a fourth dimension. From his Soho loft in New York City, Tony has for years strived to express this extra dimension in his art. The world is simply too complicated to fit into a three-dimensional structure. This is true of the objective world of uh, physics and also of our subjective world of everyday experience. The tremendous uh, implosion of information and spaces that uh, uh, come upon us from uh, sitting in a room and watching TV of something happening in Germany at the same time you're talking on the phone to somebody in California in a different time and being in all these three different spaces at the same time. Uh, this experience simply cannot be experienced in three dimensions. And one of the most uh, wonderful things that art can do for us is to make new uh, channels of experience, new templates or structures or frameworks that allow us to actually make contact with, experience the world that we're uh, really living in. To train the eye to recognize the fourth dimension is, however, no easy task. It is one that required Tony to cross over from art into the realm of mathematics. I think the evidence of the history of culture and the history of mathematics is overwhelming that it's our brains that see the three-dimensional world and not our eyes. It's the seeing, uh, seeing how an object moves, changes its shape as you move around it or as the object turns in front of you. This is the, the main way that human beings resolve three-dimensional objects. It has been uh, liberating for me to uh, not uh, view mathematics from the outside, from uh, uh, an ignorant uh, artist's point of view, but to, to actually see these structures that I'm working with. Uh, and the most powerful tool for seeing four-dimensional figures is uh, the computer. Computers uh, provide a window into the fourth dimension, and I use the computer to teach me the properties of four-dimensional figures, to teach me the paradoxes of rotation and projection that uh, uh, we need to use in order to see them. We're seeing uh, cubes passing through other cubes. We're seeing whole cubes uh, hidden behind lines, like right there. and. Uh, we're seeing uh, lines which we know are of constant length to uh, uh, getting larger and, and, and smaller. Now, when we add perspective to this uh, drawing of the hypercube, even stranger things happen. The figure seems to be swimming through itself, turning itself inside out. However, the object's mystery is resolved once we recognize it is not a rubbery three-dimensional structure but as a rigid, rotating hypercube drawn in perspective. I can add solidity and structure to this figure by filling in some of those uh, planes. Um, and as I rotate it here, as the planes pass over each other, they uh, make transparent surfaces. And I use this uh, solid rendering of the structure in my uh, artworks. What I've done is taken the designs that I've uh, made on the computer and made them in steel and plexiglass. And what I've discovered is that by using a combination of three-dimensional structures, these steel rods, and two-dimensional structures, these cast shadows on the, on the flat wall, I can create the visual information of uh, four-dimensional figures, of hypercubes rotating in four-dimensional space. And this is especially true as you walk by it. My goal as an artist working with the fourth dimension is to not only provide the viewer with the uh, visual information of the four-dimensional experience, but to communicate what an exhilarating and lyrical and wholesome experience that is.